Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about my experience reviewing ARCs. And it's kind of been seven years as of this summer since I've started reviewing books uh, from publishers in advance before publication. So ARCs, if you're not familiar, is an acronym which stands for Advanced Reader Copies. And I started this journey in writing. I first had a blog and then slowly transitioned over to YouTube. And I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about early reviews and just arcs in general, because you are ultimately a pawn in a marketing thing. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of reviewers have integrity, they have values. There are different ways they engage with the literary platform and I want to talk about it and unpack it a little bit, but I also want to demystify a little bit about the, the hype around receiving early reviewer copies because it's not as impressive as you might think and it's actually quite overwhelming. So I, I want to just talk about it, if I may. So there are several platforms where you can get advanced reviewer copies. There's Edelwiz Plus, there's NetGalley.com, which is probably the most popular. And uh, initially, I, I think I got my first reviewer copy from library thing. Um, any platform really where publishers and authors have access to send out copies could potentially have an opportunity for you to get um, a free review copy. And of course, there's the actual publisher's websites where they have a form and you can fill it out. Cool thing about this is that you as the reviewer are the one initiating contact, right? You're the one requesting these things in the first place, at the beginning at least. And if you kind of make a good relationship with these publishers over time, they might have you as, you know, you can have unlimited access to their arcs if you want to. Um, they might nudge you or send you things without you necessarily asking for them. But initially, you get to be the filter. I will also mention that there are audiobooks as well in, in these formats. And for the most part, a lot of ARCs are digital. But you do officially receive sometimes uh, a printed copy. Now, you might think that this printed copy is very cool and exciting because you get to hold in your hand this advanced reader book, right? But the truth is that when you get a bunch of them, it's quite overwhelming. You don't know if you're gonna love all of these books. You kind of aren't allowed to DNF it per se because you've promised an honest review and you wanna take it all the way through to the end. But now you have this object that you can't really resell. You can't gift it to anyone. The first page has a, a very clear, bold statement that says uncorrected proof which means it might have some typos, it might have some final edits that have not been done. So you don't really have an actual final book because you can't really do anything with it afterwards. You kind of have to discard it. it. It's rude to even put it in a little free library. And if you really, really loved the book, you might want to get an actual final copy. So you wanted the final book from the store that has the full corrected uh, version of the content. So in many ways, what you're receiving is this temporary thing that you might have to discard unless you have a whole bookshelf just filled with proofs and arcs. Uh, it's a very bizarre gift to receive in a way. It's not as big of a hype. And I think sometimes when people do receive from publisher things with extras like a candle and a cookie and extra things, while it is exciting to receive all of these things, they might not be objects you want, you might not like the smell or the taste or whatever of what's in that box, and it's just a hype and an excitement for five minutes while you get it and unbox it, but then you have all of these objects lying around your house that you kind of want to get rid of or declutter. So it's not as great of a thing as it sounds to even receive physical copies. So what you want to do ultimately is stick to the digital arcs. And in that case, you don't really get anything. The only thing you get is to read the book before anybody else, before it's fully published. And you get to skew the public opinion in its early stages. And I didn't realize how important this is, but sometimes it does have a huge effect on kind of the flow of how other readers perceive it. And, and there are pros and cons to this, and in a weird way, they sort of balance themselves out. I, I know this sounds weird, but hear me out. So I've seen some things that are kind of unfair to authors, which is 
you know, people will review a book like one or two stars on Amazon for the physical condition that it's been delivered by Amazon, which I find completely unfair because if you're an author and you wrote that book um, and your early reviews are because of the physical appearance of the book that's been delivered is not fair. I've seen negative reviews of audiobooks because of the narrator, but not because of the content, which again, I find a little bit unfair. But then I've seen reviews on Goodreads of a book before it's even come out, before the proofs or the arcs are out, where people are just excited the book has been announced and they'll give it five stars. And at that point, you're like, that's, that's not really a review. Um, you don't know anything about it. It might be a huge disappointment, but all it tells you is that this author has hype around them and a, a dedicated fan base. So it's kind of a weird balancing out of these reviews. But when it comes to the early copies, there are some pros. So you could potentially get some authors tweeting about you, like favorably saying this reviewer gets what I'm doing. In the past, I've gotten Jane Yolen tweeted about me. That was pretty cool. There are several books out there that have a blurb with my name or infinite text citing some of the things I've said. You do find yourself questioning many times, is this something I would have said if um, I was scared that the publisher wouldn't like it or would I have purchased this book when it came out in hardcover at full price? Is this something I want to read? Like you become more selective over time, especially when you find very overwhelming to, to get so many copies in advance that you do have to read, most of which are very forgettable. So it does put everything in perspective for you as a reader because you want to have integrity, you want to be trusted, you want, if you do have a platform for people to believe in you, you want people to trust your opinions and you wanna have integrity for yourself. Um, and this, this is very complicated. And I think one of the things you realize too is that a book does not exist in a vacuum. You kind of need discourse. You need people to talk about it. Some people to poke some, some holes. Sometimes they present to you a different perspective that you might not have considered. Sometimes you understand that you've really reached out of your comfort zone. Like my first review was of a science fiction novella from Simon Morden and I had never read science fiction prior to that point. So I went in for hard sci-fi as my first review and that was just very confusing for me all around. So that was my fault. I've seen some reviewers who in their own personal blogs would give it like four or five stars and then go on Goodreads, read some of the early uh, jaded reviewers and then change their minds on that platform. And, and that I found a little bit strange as well. Um, and the other thing that's very important is to allow yourself time. Time is so important because on one hand, you wanna be part of this extra early hype before the book gets out because you wanna be a part of something, right? But sometimes you might realize, oh, you know, that book was actually quite forgettable. I was excited for five minutes when I read it and now I don't think about it at all. There is this one book, for example, that I, I still think about, even though I reviewed it seven years ago, and it's called Drinks with Dead Poets, where this um, professor in New England sort of, um, I don't know, falls through a time warp or something, and then dead poets from the early 19th century America come to life and attend his classes as themselves, and it's highly atmospheric. It just has fall vibes to it. Um, I still think about that book a lot and maybe at the time that I had reviewed it I I don't know if I was super critical of it or where I placed it It's just one of those things that makes you think like wow I needed some space and time uh, To really assess if I'm still thinking about that book if it was worth it There are some things that surprise you pleasantly like for example I reviewed an, an early copy of a YA book. This was a Canadian book uh, I really enjoyed it. It was cute. It was fun. And then when the sequel came out, the publisher reached out to me asking, hey, I saw that you reviewed this first copy. There's a second book coming out, but you can decide how you want to participate in this tour. And I chose to interview the artist who designed the cover. And this kind of introduced me to a new person. I got to uh, learn about the artistic process in designing book covers. And that was something kind of fun and different but I got to have some say and some choice in it. Where it becomes more complicated is where payment is involved. If there's a third party, like a platform that pays their reviewers, 
but you can have a negative or positive review as long as it's honest. I think that might be okay. But if your negative reviews can lose your job opportunity going forward in that platform, you do have to wonder about the ethics of your actual review. It's kind of complicated if someone's actually paying you for a review, it muddies things up a little bit. Even when you have authors who are your friends or your peers, it's complicated because they are your friends. So for example, I usually stay away from reviewing any books written by other booktubers. There is one booktuber, and this is Katie from Books and Things, who I know for a fact I would absolutely buy her books if I wasn't on booktube. I know because I have gone in her comment section like eight years ago saying I cannot wait for you to publish a book. And I've already bought her first book. I'm definitely going to get her second one, but I am going to give myself some time and some space and I'm not gonna be part of the early hype just because I respect Katie so much that I don't want my reviews of her books to be seen as like a a friendship thing like I actually want to be reflective and to make sure that I, I bought the books myself and that I would have uh, been honest anyway in the first place right so you kind of want to to give yourself that credit and and to be ethical and to also just like trust yourself sometimes I do find other people's opinions very valuable like I remember reviewing a book this wasn't an arc it was just a reading of um, the novella by Patrick Rothfuss and I found it very bizarre storytelling I found it very emotionless and one of my closest friends who is on the spectrum told me you know this is actually very valuable to me this is exactly what I wanted and I've never connected with a with a character more there's something about the way she looks at the world around her in this book that's just so um, mesmerizing to me and it's important to me and I connect to it and I never thought about it from that point of view and, and it changed my perspective on the book. So I know for myself that it's, it's important to see what other people are saying, but to also have my own side. So I wanna always have my page, it's like two pages, right? Like my style, my opinions, my personal beliefs in this book before I see what anyone else says about it. And I wanna be honest, just like me, and the page. The second page is what have others said about it? What are some of the criticisms? Are they valid? Do they hold up? Um, what's the world around it? And trying to see through the marketing as well because there is a component to it where the hype around it, the artistry, the social media part of the marketing for this book plays a huge role in how it's perceived. Sometimes even like the attractiveness uh, or popularity of the author themselves contributes to this. Like sometimes actors write books and people are having this parasocial relationship with the author in advance that skews the, the hype. And, and you wanna be very critical, but also aware of this other social sphere around the book in addition to your own beliefs. And then to give it that space and time where you see, was it still memorable? Am I still thinking about this book? Um, would I read it again? Would I recommend it to a friend? Uh, there's a lot of questions to ask yourself around these to make sure that your contribution to the literary world as a reviewer is valuable and not just to others but to yourself. The other thing is that if some authors say positive things or negative things I like to think about it as kind of that Buddhist statement like I do not take pride in my achievements but I'm also not at fault or blame for my failures you kind of want to remain neutral right so to think of authors tweeting about you positively and negatively as both kind of the same thing even though they they shouldn't they should not engage with reviewers in a negative way. But I do think that like you as a, as a person with integrity should, should think about all of this kind of neutral. But I think the one thing I want to dispel is that just because people receive early reviewer copies does not mean that they're getting paid. They don't even really get a physical copy because if they do, it's not something they can do anything with afterwards. It's just an overwhelming object on their desk. Um, the only thing you really get is you get to read it before other people and you get to have one of the early opinions that might skew the direction this book is going to take, you know, in the public sphere afterwards. I am going to still review early copies in, in my blog in written format and then if I give it some time, 
uh, I bring it up here as well. I think that's my distance. Like I just, I separate the written word from the, the spoken one here. And then that gives me time to assess how I'm actually feeling about a book. So let me know down below what you think about arcs or if you have any additional questions. But I hope I've demystified some of the aura around receiving early copies because anyone could have access to these, like even right now. And there is a lot of pressure and it can be really overwhelming and you don't really get anything. Um, not really. And, and ultimately you have to remember that this is time you're spending on these books and your time equals your life. So you want to be careful about what you promote, what you market and what you dedicate your time reading. Um, and if you find that most of the things you've been getting are forgettable, then you just had like a very forgettable reading year. And that's just sad. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.